Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. Today we are, well, I'm part of a, the What Would You Make collaboration. Um, so this video is dealing with, we're, we're making stuff with either all wood or with wood elements in it. So um, I've got a couple of cute little projects that I will be working on. And we've got, um, we've also got, you know, other creators in this collaboration. So I will leave the information for that in the description box below with the playlist link and the hosts links. Um, and I hope that you go show some love to the other creators in the collaboration and have a um, good time and get inspired by some of our creations. So let's get crafting. So as I stated, um, this is the What Would You Make collaboration. Our guest host is Crafting My Best Life with Lisa. And we've got Brenda with Rustic and Lace uh, as one of our hosts. And uh, Christine with Divine Designs is our other host. So, our first project today, um, I've jumped on the Chalkator wagon. Um, right now, I'm just doing the, the monthly thing. And... Um, I signed up through Brenda. Brenda is a chalk drawer designer. So, um, if you, you know, she's in this playlist. So, you know, I'm going to be putting her, um, channel link in my description box. Sorry, just as I started recording, somebody texted me and my brain just went out the window. So anyway, I, um, the description box will have her, uh, channel link and, the links for the other two hosts as well as the playlist um you can find out more information on the talk couture from her and um yeah so anyway i guess i have to stop for a minute because somebody won't quit calling me so i'm gonna pause this and i shall be right back okay sorry y'all have a. Uh, I guess uh, us, our family trying to figure out our Christmas, or not Christmas, Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's on different work schedules, different days off. It's always so much fun. But anyway, so I'm using, um, this is October's um, chalk, uh, Club Couture um, kit. So, um I'm doing the, the little gingerbread man. And like I said, Brenda's a chalk couture designer. Her information will be in the description box. So if you're interested, um, go ahead and, and contact her. Um, she can give you all the information you need, answer any questions that you have. Um, I've just been having fun with the, the chalk couture stuff. It's, it's kind of neat. Um, I, I have a few of the stencil things that I ordered off Amazon and whatnot, but I just, I'm, I find the whole process kind of fun and interesting. So it's a new way to, uh, to craft and do, um, you know, make some interesting projects. So here I'm taking the, um, the darker brown I'm putting on the face. And it comes with the, you know, when you do the kit, the monthly kit, it comes with the little packets like that. And I was thinking, you know, with having to do the the whole body with one of them and whatnot, that it would use a lot of that. The, the paste really goes a long way. I mean, there's still a decent amount left in the, in the pack um, of that color. And obviously the other colors that I'm only using a teeny tiny bit of. Um, 
there's still plenty left in there and I just folded the the tops down on the thing and stuck them in a plastic bag so they didn't dry out and then I have some to use later if I want to um and the you know I mean the stencil it came with the with the little uh gingerbread shape um but I mean it you saw that it came with different um like candy canes and bows and different things like that so you you know you could use this for other things you can make signs you know with the gingerbread man on it there's you know the possibilities are are really endless um just put your imagination to work and you'd be good to go Now, um, I did use puff paint for the little squigglies on there because I wanted to add a little more dimension on here. <clears throat> now, the stencil has two... <clears throat> pardon me. The stencil has two things on it um, for the buttons. It has, like, little circles, and then it has little hearts that you can use for the buttons, or it also came with these um, half beads for the buttons. So they, they gave you a couple more options other than just, you know, this. So I thought that was really neat. Um, here I'm just trying to tie it in a bow. And it's a thick enough string that I didn't like the bow. So I just kind of tied it in a knot, hung it down. And here we are on to DIY number two. maybe <laughs> yeah all right so i am going to do another busted canvas um i kind of have been having fun doing these too i print um went online and um i got these prints off of canva sized them in my silhouette studio and then printed them out and it seems, no matter what I do, I mean, these canvases are supposed to be 5 by 7 And that's what I sized my paper for. Or my printout on the thing for. And it was still a little bit, as you can see, it was a little bit small for that. But the other canvas is going to go on top of that, so it's not a big deal. Um... It's not a big deal that it didn't, you know, go all the way to each edge because the, um, the other canvas is going to go on top of it. It'll cover that where it's lacking there. I just took some, uh, Mod Podge, Mod Podge the, this one on, um, with this print and then did the same with the other two prints on the other canvas. But I'm going to, like to take this time to thank all of you that um, subscribe to my channel and watch my content. All of you that are new, um, if you're coming over from the playlist, let me know where you, uh, which creator's um, video you clicked on that led you to the playlist and, and to my video. And I invite you to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Um, I'm trying to work my way up to a thousand subscribers. I'm five away. Five! Five subscribers away. So excited. I'm almost there. So anyway, I'm taking, um, this canvas here. Oh, and when I hit a thousand, uh, subscribers, I will be doing a giveaway. Um, so if you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to definitely do so. Um, and for all of you that have subscribed, thank you so much for your support. All right, so with this one, um, the inside of this canvas is smaller than the 5 by 7 So what I did was put that on top, used my finger to kind of crease around the, um, the inside edge there so that I could get this sized to go inside the canvas. And did the same thing. I just used Mod Podge. And 
um, smoothed it down. And then I did the same on the top. Kind of, uh, I kind of have a gingerbready thing going on, at least with the first two projects. I took and um, cut that one out. Did the same thing. Mod podged it on. I didn't need a whole lot um, of design on that one because we're doing a busted canvas, which is going to bust out of the middle. So, um, I thought the peppermints on the edge were, um, were a neat little way to have a little something on the front and not have, you know, not feel like I was wasting a whole bunch, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Um, and I've got this ornament here that, uh, me and Dee Dee had hit up a yard sale um, out here by where I live. And it was like the last day and she was like, just throw a bunch of stuff in a box or a bin and, and you know, give me a price. You, name your price. So she had a lot of little Christmas ornament things and, you know, whatnot. So um, we grabbed a bunch of them. <clears throat> They've been sitting in the stash probably two years, but I'm finally using at least one of them. There were a couple of them in there um, like that. But here you just take and um, when you bust, you cut the canvas and um, then you curl them and glue the, the things so that they're, you know, kind of looks like it's busting out. And then um, right here where the two canvases meet, I don't like that space in there. It bugs me. Um, I wish I could find a way to, to make it a little more seamless. But um, I have um, just been using wine to go around that area and then I go around the edge of the canvas um the top canvas with the twine as well and I don't know if I had already done that I don't think I already went around no I haven't done the going around the edge with the twine yet so I put our little gingerbread house in there and then I got some polyfill and Stuck it in there. Um, I had some spray glue from Dollar Tree that I had tried on my last video. Um, and it just, it doesn't spray. It, it just kind of, <laughs> it's like it, it takes a drop and just like pushes it out and it just drops. It, it, it's not what I was expecting when I see spray adhesive. Um, but I was trying to use that where I could glue some glitter on there, make it kind of shimmery, and it just didn't work out that way. So, it's okay. <laughs> I still sprinkled some glitter in. Um, I also took, uh, as you saw, some puff paint and put it around the edge of the, the roof there, make it look like snow, and sprinkled some of that ultra-fine glitter on there so you can kind of see where and I wasn't too worried about the glitter being scattered through the rest of it um, it just adds a little bit of Christmas magic to it so now I'm taking and painting I'm using nutmeg brown and painting four of these little wooden gingerbread men from uh, Dollar Tree. And I used uh, puff paint to put on their faces and whatnot. Um, this is where I'm taking and running the stuff along there. Somehow or another when I was doing... I, my video kept... My camera kept either 
either I forgot to hit play or it kept shutting off while it was recording. I'm not sure which it was, but I'm missing some footage. Um, okay, so I hadn't done the... There we go. I'm just putting the eyes on here. But I did miss getting the rest, putting the rest of the stuff on there because my camera either shut off or I forgot to restart it. I think I had got up to get something or I was fighting. Oh, I know what it was. I was fighting with the red paint. I had to clear, clear the nozzle out and had shut it off while I did that. And I think I forgot to turn it back on that time. But later in the, the video, I was missing footage too. So I don't know. <clears throat> it's challenging me today. Uh, today. That's okay. I just took and applied um, each of those little gingerbread men to the uh, cor four corners of the canvas. And um, I did miss footage of me putting the um, right there in the top middle where it's got I don't know. I don't even know what that is. Um, right below where I'm painting. Um, I did not catch the footage of me putting, I put a little gingerbread man button on there and used some of the puff paint to fill in the, because the holes for the button is where the buttons would be for the gingerbread man. So I used the, the puff paint to fill those holes and, and make little red buttons on him. You'll see the, all of these at the, the final reveal. All right, DIY number three. This one was the longest one, and it's my favorite one out of all of these. I took, um, took one of these little things from Dollar Tree. I've had this in my stash for quite a while, too. Um... <clears throat> And thinking back, you know, as I was editing and whatnot, I realized that I meant to paint that box and did not do so. But you don't really see, unless you're looking from the back side or the side of it, um, you don't really see it. But I can still go back and, and paint it, which I probably will. I was trying to figure out how to remove that without tearing up the box and then um I thought well what I'm doing with it should cover that and it doesn't cover it all the way up so um but it's okay so now I'm taking my exacto and I made a little hole there and I just because my drill battery is dead um made a little hole there and then took part a uh, screwdriver and just made it bigger and in the process of doing that I popped that bottom loose a little bit so I was able to slide the light up through there and then you know that you'll see it's easier for you to see what I'm doing than it is for me to explain what I'm doing once I get the lights untangled thought I cut out some of this uh, fighting with the lights. I guess I was wrong. So I just take and stick that in there and then I slid it up into the hole that I made. And yes, I deliberately only put one light in there. <clears throat> Ultimately, it would have been great if, I, if you could find lights where there's only one for little projects like this, but I made the rest of them work too, as you'll see later on. So now I took some paint stir sticks and I measured them and cut them down. I have one of those little mini table saws and I cut them down um, for the top and the, the sides. Now here's the fun challenging part here. Um, I pulled out the clay 
and I was just having a heck of a time. I cut out a lot of the, the footage of me playing with the clay because I was having a heck of a time trying to get it um, smoothly, you know, in the shape of the box. Um, and I was limited on how much I had, so I was trying to be sparse with it. Which, you know, I had to pretty much had to piece it together um, in there. But that's okay. It turned out, and I'm not mad about it. It turned out okay. So I just took, and, and when I rolled it out, it obviously spread it a little bit longer, so. And now I'm uh, going in and cutting off that excess there. Yeah, this was a little bit of a process, but it was worth it in the end. I was actually wondering as I was, because I I got a head start this time on my, my projects, but um, this one I was doing last night. Um, I had other stuff through the week. I work a full-time job in a law firm, so um, I craft in the morning or in the evenings and on the weekends. Um, I had some other stuff going on in the evenings, so I didn't get to craft this one, um, earlier in the week. So I was doing it last night. I was almost afraid I was not going to get it done and, and at least in time to be on time with my video. But I did. I persevered through. The good thing about the weekends when I don't have to work is... I don't have to go to bed at a certain time because I can sleep in a little the next day. I don't have to get up as early, so I used it to my advantage and got this done so that all I had to do was edit and voiceover today. So as you can see, I'm just piecing it together in here. I thought about cutting out some of this piecing together, you know, in here, but um, if any of you wanted to try this project, I didn't want you to get flustered because it looked like I, you know, got all one big piece in there, you know, and whatnot. It, it did not happen that smoothly. I had to work at it. So I just took that. And then um, now I'm going to pull it out of there. I'm going to use the paint bottle to kind of smooth those patched pieces in. What am I doing? Oh, I always try to make sure I put my clay back in the, the package um, immediately so that it doesn't start drying out. And this is, um, this is a, a mold. It's, I think it's actually a fondant mold. I don't know. It might be a clay mold. Actually, I did get this in the, the clay section uh, at Hobby Lobby. But it's it's a brick mold. And you may or may not be able to... I could kind of, kind of see it in there. I had to kind of play with it a little bit to get it all in there nice and neat. So now... Now I'm fighting with getting it back in there and trying to do it where I don't mess up my um, my mold areas, which I did manage to, to get it in there and, and not mess them up too bad. So, all right. And then I just trimmed off any excess that was hanging over. I don't know if you have guessed what I'm making yet? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let you watch and see if you can figure it out. Oh, Lord. And, of course, my uh, phone wants to go crazy. Like I said, all morning long, not a, a, a thing with the phone, but now everybody's texting about Thanksgiving. It's kind of my fault, because 
earlier, I had texted something about Thanksgiving and they're just now answering me. So frustrating. It's so, so difficult sometimes to try to get everybody's schedules, um, you know, meshed up because, um, my son, my one, uh, the son that's hosting, um, him and his girlfriend are hosting this year and she's a nurse. So she works 12 hour shifts and whatnot. Um, but she's hosting for her family and then hosting for our family. So we've got to figure out what her days off are going to be around Thanksgiving and, um, the ex-husband and the youngest son work this weird flip-flop shift where, you know, it's 12-hour shifts. They do so many days on day shift and then a day off and then they end up, you know, night shifts and then a day off. And it, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, makes it very hard to plan any kind of family stuff because they work in a factory, so... The factory doesn't care that, you know, it's a holiday weekend and that families, you know, often have multiple th- um, holiday things to accommodate everybody, you know. It is what it is. We'll figure it out. We always do. And if we don't, then we just don't pull it off this year. Anyway, so... um. I cut, I ended up going back and cutting a second one of those, um, that I'm working on that length, um, cause I wanted it too wide. And now I'm putting the tumbling tower blocks on there. Set that aside, let it dry. And I am going to, I think I'm going to paint. Yeah, now I'm going to paint. I don't make you watch me do all the painting. Um, this is the Apple Barrel Barn Red. Because it seemed the most appropriate color I had in my, my stash for for bricks. Just kind of lightly brush across there. Um, I'm trying trying not to get a lot of paint in the um the word was just there um in between you know the spaces between the bricks um the grout the grout lines that's the word I was looking for and because this is you know supposed to be old um and whatnot you know bricks get you have some bricks that are darker, some get faded, some, you know, um, and then I took some, I took a fan brush and some black and ran it through there too, um, which is very much appropriate for what I'm doing here. And now I'm just staining all the wood with, um, Waverly's Antique Wax. And I just, I kept my brush, I'd dip it in the water so that it would water this down a little bit where it would glide better and not be so dark. And then I had also taken, that's where I lost footage, was um, I had taken tumbling tower blocks. I had four sets of three that were stuck together that I put down at the bottom and glued it to the bottom there. <clears throat> And now I am taking some fall leaves, which, um, yes, this is a, a Christmas video and I'm using fall leaves, but wait till you see what I'm using it for. They, they make, they're, they're wonderful for what I'm using them for. I do tip this over, you know, flip it and tip it over on its back where you can actually see what I'm doing in there. In just a minute. Uh, maybe. Thought I, yeah, there we go. I, I realized I can't see what I'm doing unless I flip it around upside down. 
So I'm taking some of those little um, twig pieces that you can buy at um, Dollar Tree and just trying to figure out placement in there. Gluing them together and maybe like I'm trying to, I was trying to decide if I wanted to put the, the leaf in there or if I wanted to get all the logs set up first and then decided to set up the logs first and I'm fiddling around trying to find placement on those. I've got limited space in that little box so I had to play around with it. And here I'm taking and tucking that light up in between those logs. Now I'll glue the logs down. Have you figured out what I'm making yet? I'm making a fireplace with a mantle. And fall leaves make wonderful faux flames in a fire like this. Especially if you're able to put like a little light in there that makes it light up. Even better if you can manage to find a way to, to make the leaves move and the light, you know, in there. But it is what it is. We've got light. It's lit up. That'll do. I'm just taking um, different pieces of red and reds and orange, you know, leaves and tucking them in there. Make it look like um, flames coming out of the logs there. And of course, Smokey, he's got to put his paws on every project. <laughs> I guess he decided, okay, I've touched it, now I'm going to move. <laughs> I did not realize when I got him that he was going to be my um, lap crafting buddy there, you know. So he just now, there he goes. <laughs> and he keeps, he keeps getting up there more and more. <laughs> where he's almost laying completely on everything. And there I am trying to keep him from uh, going up the arm of the chair and, and bumping my glue gun. That wouldn't have been uh, very pleasant for him. He's just a little stinker is what he is. He's adorable, though. Gotta give him that. Probably the only thing that saves him when he's in a zoomie mode. Because he drives me crazy when he gets zoomies. Between him and the husky. Because when he gets zoomies, then she gets zoomies. I live in a tiny house. It is not big enough for, for both of them to have zoomies around the house. It's just a recipe for disaster. The fact that I live in a tiny house is why I craft on my lap a lot. That and I sit upright in a computer chair, you know, all day at work. So I like to be able to kick back and relax in my recliner. So, you know, there were times there where I felt like I had to choose between my relax and my recliner time and my crafting time. And I was like, you know, there's no reason why I can't do both. So there you have it. Crafting on my lap. Hey, it works. Unless I'm doing a bigger project. And then it gets a little bit um, interesting. So now I'm just taking... I had pulled out like... I don't know, several of these little log pieces. I think I pulled about seven of them out. And didn't use all of them in the fire. So I made a stack of logs for the fireplace there. So now here comes part of the fun part here. Um, oh, wait, no, not yet. So 
I've got a little sleigh there that I put one of those um, snowmen on. And I got that, um, the sleigh and the snowman. Um, and all the other little things you see laying there. Because I wasn't sure what I was going to use. What all. I got all of those at Hobby Lobby. Um, so here I am trying to figure out what to do with these lights. And um, so I thought, well, let me make a garland around the fireplace um because i've got like this wired garland type stuff uh that was in that was in our stash um so i used it and i just wrapped the lights around it to the length of the you know i, I wrapped it and just you know kept working on around until i got it where I needed it. And then I took these little, um, these little bunches of pit berries and mini pine cones. They're on like a wired stem. So what I did, I didn't like the lights sticking out. Um, so what I did was I took and I folded the light, um, to the garland and then used those to hold it, you know, where it's laying with the garland instead of sticking out from the garland. If that makes sense. I don't know. But as you can see here, I'm just kind of wrapping it around there where the light isn't sticking out in weird directions. <clears throat> now these little, these little pick things are kind of sticking out a little bit, but they don't look quite as funny sticking out as the lights did. So, I was like, okay, I can live with that. And now I've got it done all the way to the end there. Um, what do we, oh, I've got these little lanterns, too, that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I was, I w went yesterday and I was looking, I was trying to find, like, miniatures for a dollhouse that had, like, the little tapered candles or something battery operated I couldn't find any but I did find those little um, lantern ornaments and they don't light up but they have a hole in the top and one of those little lights sticks in that hole perfectly so I was like ooh I can still light it up so um, that's what I did you'll see here in a minute so I took and, and clamped, used some of those little Dollar Tree clamps to um, clamp the garland on each at the bottom of each side there. Um, I don't recall if I already put glue on it to glue it down or not. I don't know. Either way, I do put hot glue in there and then use the clamps to hold it for a little bit until it's fully set. Oh, there I go. All right, now I'm clamping it. Maybe. Yep. Because I didn't want, um, as I was fiddling around with the rest of it, I didn't want those coming undone. And then I just glued the little, the little red lantern down at the bottom there, and. You saw that where I had tucked one of those lights through. Um, the light that I tucked through the thing is going to go in the top of that lantern to light it up. And then I've got um, the ex any of the excess. I'm just kind of hot gluing to the back side of the, the box there. So that it's not sticking out all willy-nilly. Well, and then I just um, glued the battery pack on the back, making sure that the battery door was accessible. If you do this, make sure that you glue it on the side that does not have the screw for the battery pack. And then I've got a, another gold lantern that I put up on the, the top of it with the snowman that's sitting on a sled. 
Now, I didn't glue those down because I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing with them just yet. If I'm, I'm not sure about the placement of them and all that good stuff. So, I'm just kind of, I, I haven't glued them down because I might add more up there. Um, I don't know. But here I'm taking and adding some stockings to our, um, our mantle. Because what's a Christmas fireplace and mantle without stockings hanging from it, right? So I just took in, um, they were stocking ornaments, so I just took the strings that were on them, ran them underneath the garland, tacked them down, and then I tacked the garland down on top of it so that the garland at the top doesn't move around. I also tacked um, at the corners as well. I'm just going through and snipping those off. So, so again, I want to tell y'all, all of you that, um, all of you subscribers, I just want to say thank you again for your support. All of you that are new here, I, if you like what you see, I invite you to please um, like, subscribe, comment, share. Um, it helps my channel grow and helps me continue to do what I love. And you'll get a better shot of this on the final reveal. Because I didn't glue those on top, I couldn't tilt it where you could see it. But here is the final reveal. You can see the little gingerbread man I put in the middle there. That was one of the things that I lost footage of or forgot to um, forgot to hit play on the camera. I don't know. Or record, I should say. So here we've got um, the little fireplace. This is before I turn the lights on. And I'm trying to find the button while not going crazy with the camera. There we go. So we've, got, we've got the little lantern up on top. There's no light in that one. And you can see the fire is glowing. And then we've got um, the one that's sticking inside that lantern makes it, you know, look like it's lit up. So thanks y'all for watching. Have a great day.